Hello everyone, today I'd like to show you my latest update in creating animated battle maps using tools like Dungeon Draft and Foundry Virtual Tabletop. Creating a series of animated dioramas of sorts with a focus on your standard outdoor maps. You'll see three main terrain types in this video. A mixture of forests, dirt and rocks that would allow us to create hundreds of animated random encounter maps with ease. Included in this video is also a small showcase of the animated tokens I've been working on that can be dragged and dropped into any of these maps on the fly. So far, I've made about 15 of these, mainly character tokens of medium or small size but I also plan on animating some larger creatures in the near future. Uh, as you drop them in, you'll notice they are all facing the same direction, which can obviously uh, be easily resolved by rotating them. But for now, I'd like to show you something else instead. You see, tokens aren't the only creature animations I've been working on for my maps. I've also been designing some creature animations that can be included in the scenery, like these butterflies here. Just like the tokens, they have been animated in a simple 4 second loop. I might create more complex anim uh, animations of these in the future, but for now these really do the trick of, uh, of adding some flavor to our animated maps. It's been really interesting exploring the basic mechanics for building these types of maps and I'd love to spend some more time in the future trying out some more complex animations as well. Now, let's move on to a short time lapse video uh, for creating a map like this from scratch using my art assets and brushes in Dungeon Draft. What I really wanted to focus on in this batch was creating a series of twin terrain brushes where one brush is just a basic texture brush and the other is a similar brush but one that includes line art for adding in some more detail to your terrain. The basic brush I use on the edges where one terrain blends with another terrain and the line art brush is used in the center of a single piece of terrain to add some more detail. As usual, all my terrains also come accompanied with a series of paths to create more refined edges for any terrain type or add some height to the map like these rocks, these rocky walls right here. I've been taking uh, my time to get the most out of each terrain brush where in the past I, uh, I most I put most of the focus on building a variety of assets to get us started. I really want to make sure each terrain has an expensive set of paths, objects and even walls to go along with them. Based on some of the feedback I've gotten in the past and looking through some of the designs I've made with my original assets, I made sure to take my time creating a series of maps that focus on different aspects of each terrain type going from small weeds to broken branches to fallen leaves to really make all the paths blend together. Dungeon Draft has a system for providing lighting and shadows to a map, but as mentioned in the past I don't use it myself. So when I'm exporting my maps I would simply export one version as is and one with only the, uh, the objects that cast a shadow. For the animated maps I export a third version as well, that will be the base of my animated map. It's basically a version with, of the map without all the objects that I have an animated version for. So that when I import these uh, three into Photoshop, I can use the shadow version to find all the objects that cast a shadow, and I can use the animated map to export my final file for use in Foundry. I do this by control or command clicking the object layer in my layers and then reversing set selection. Now to get the best result for my shadows I simply expand the selection a bit to make sure the selection doesn't start beyond the edge of my line art 
and I can use this to start drawing in the shadows with a simple multiply layer. The reason I use a selection and not a paint uh, underneath the object layer is because the export of a PNG layer in Dungeon Draft creates some pixelated artifacts that bring down the quality of the art. You can just choose to go with this, but I prefer using this workaround instead. Then I activate the animate map layer so that I can paint out all the object masks for all my animated objects. The animated objects move around. So if you forget to paint this out, you'll see the edge of your shadow path appearing underneath. Finally, we move on to um, Foundry, where I create a new scene for my animated map. I usually do this by dropping my map right into the scene folder of my world, but I forgot to do this, so let's just upload it by dragging it in real quick. I'm going to skip all the map options for now, keeping the grid as is. As uh, for some of you noticed, uh, the grid in my other scenes was a grid I painted in myself, which is just a little bonus I like to add to give the map a better sense of height. Next, we move on to the tile section of Foundry, where we can import our animated objects and change the display mode so we can read the names of our animated objects. Finishing up our map, by dragging and dropping in the animated version of each object we had originally imported in our dungeon draft design. Now, I haven't done extensive research in dropping in animated objects in Foundry, so you might be able to actually get a visual of the object that you want to drop in. I just did it by name, so it took a bit longer to find the right visuals. Dropping them in I also realized I had forgot to delete one object here, which could uh, have been easily resolved by just exporting the map again from Dungeon Draft after deleting it properly. When the map is finished, I can drop in my tokens here and we're good to go for a random encounter. If you're interested in my assets, uh, check my Patreon. I plan on experimenting more with animation in the near future and keeping all of these tests in a fa single foundry file, which you'll be able to access on my Patreon as well, if you'd like to check it out for yourself.